Hello and welcome. If you clicked on this video, then you know this is a reading vlog specifically for A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. I have reading vlogs for both Caravelle and the first two books in Once Upon a Broken Heart that I posted on my channel earlier this year or like end of last year so definitely check them out if you want my thoughts on the whole rest of the series but spoiler alert i love it all i think stephanie garber's writing is so good and the battle of never after ended on a big cliffhanger a big cliffhanger and i have been so nervous to read this book so the way that i'm going to do this reading vlog is it's going to be my reactions throughout reading this book i am quite nervous i've avoided spoilers so far on social media but people either love or hate the endings and i've heard it's left open for more spin-offs so i am nervous i am nervous so there will be no spoilers throughout and then i will be like doing an in-depth talk uh, with spoilers at the end so you can just click off the video and you don't have to skip over anything you can just kind of click out of it at the end so yeah we're going on the journey with them today also like let's look at the Barnes and Noble exclusive it's so pretty I didn't know how the color was going to show up when I saw it online but when I got it in person I was very excited and then this is the naked hardback case um does it have any oh. I, I don't know, I feel like this one's going to be kind of a controversial ending, so I'm scared. If Eva and Jess are not endgame, like, I will cry. I will cry. I'm not going to read out of my, like, fancy special edition. I'm going to read in this edition, but I have something fun to unbox. This arrived. I did get, like, sign up for this a little bit late, and I was so afraid that I wasn't going to get it. It's the pre-order dust jackets, of which I have... For the other two books so it was like if I missed out on this one I would have been so upset and okay how am I gonna get this out my fingers aren't long enough okay Woo. the email that I got this which like they never sent out emails for saying that you got your pre-order um, but thank you for doing that because you saved me from heartache so here we have the front which is Eva and Jax and the back which is Eva and Apollo and then these cute little details on here and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and like put it on camera which is kind of nerve-wracking because it's actually kind of hard to but I want to fit it on with the other dust jacket underneath it because that's what I did for all the other ones is I kept both dust jackets on so the way that I do this is I just kind of like the easiest part to line up is this like flap same thing in the back and now that I've kind of gotten those lined up now I will actually like crease it I will say I think that they do make this these dust jackets just like slightly bigger to fit over the regular dust jackets it's kind of unclear anyways here she is here's the front and here's the back they've all had this like double-sided oh, yeah i'm nervy so i'm gonna take this off for now i'm actually gonna take both of them off and this is what i will be reading so i'm gonna start it this little heart here jack still hasn't gotten all three kisses yet and i don't you know there's a lot of questions that need to be answered Look at this little map of the Magnificent North. I just love the whimsical writing and the ending. Oof. I'm so I'm so scared. I also just read Thorn and Fallen. You could probably find my reading vlog for that. I probably just posted it not too long before this one. And it was very spicy new adult fantasy. So I'm kind of excited to go back to a more like YA fantasy. Because that's kind of what I'm in the mood for now. It's like, you ever get like burnt out on smut? Anyways, but I've been so highly anticipating this. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go do some November bullet journaling, and I'll put some footage of that. Also, can we just take a look at, like, Jax's um, wanted poster that I got for pre-order incentive? Sorry, it's, like, golden hour in here, so you have all the blinds. But, like, I put it on my bookshelf because I didn't know what else to do with it, but I love that cute little thing. It was, like, a pre-pre-order incentive where you just signed up for it. They were doing a lot of hype for this series, obviously. But yeah, so that's that. I got my dust jackies, and I'm going to start this book after I bullet journal for a little bit, and it's going to be a nice, relaxing Friday night. Okay, quick update, because I'm about to go do activities for the day. 
but i got to page 41 of a curse for true love and i did have to look up just like a recap of what happened in all the books and i feel like i'm on better ground now that i did that because i was like okay like i'm immersed in the story i was like should i go back and read the books but i just don't have time for that and i just really want to get to this one so i did not reread all of them but honestly if you go to like a recap like if you just search the book title plus recap you can get some websites that have like pretty detailed lists of everything that went on so that helped me situate myself i haven't seen any spoilers for this yet which is insane it's making me scared because i'm like i don't want to encounter any kind of spoilers but there are still some questions about jacks that like we need to be answered like why does he eat apples? I still don't ever understand how he got out of the deck of cards um, in Caraval in the first place. Because one day he was in the cards and then one day he was just like out and like the other people had to get out somehow, but he was just there. So there are still some things about him that really confuse me. We also have Evangeline's like kiss curse and he still has not asked for the third kiss yet. And also we know Jack's kiss is deadly, except for his true love. And, but we know some things in Caraval that are confusing with that as well. So I don't know, I don't know. Hello, so it's later in the day. I was doing a bunch of family activities today. So really just having time to sit down and read now. I read for a little bit and now we watched the last episode of The Mandalorian that's out so far. So super emotional and let's see i'm on page 94 it definitely is a little bit of a meandering start what i think is really interesting about stephanie garber's writing style is i feel she actually has like people talk about how she has like a whimsical writing style but it's whimsical yet sparse and i feel like she can set the tone and the mood in as few words as possible like it almost is a very fairy tale-esque writing style where it's very simple but yet paints this elaborate picture in so few words and i think that that is a real talent to be able to get your point across in as simple and as few words as possible while still having this very whimsical tone and i have a really i don't know if i can think of anyone that has like quite such a similar tone to her but i think she definitely like i mean and the font in these books is a lot bigger than in other books and i have a suspicion that these that her books are definitely like less words than the typical YA book, but yet it still gets the story across. So I find that very interesting about her writing. Um, she also incorporates like a lot of like news um, articles and also like different plays on words and things to fold into the story. And I always quite enjoy that. So yeah, that is all that I'm going to say for this update now. I'm currently on page 95 and this book has... 367 pages i'm gonna try and read like a bunch tonight we'll see how late i can actually stay up but once i get tired i'm gonna go to bed i'm doing some reading sprints with tori tomorrow so i will be doing that and i will hopefully finish it out then or maybe i'll already be done but i also want to do a spoiler section so now i'm going to end this section and if you go to the end of this video i'm going to be doing like live reactions to the book in the spoiler section of the video so the first half is literally just like my reactions and talking about things and then now like in the second half it's just going to be the whole section where i as i am reading through the book i thought i was just going to do a discussion at the end but i'm going to do it as i'm reading because i have things that i want to react to on the vlog but i still want to make it like friendly for people that don't want spoilers because if i saw a spoiler for this book I would be very upset and I have to say people on the internet are being so friendly whereas I have been spoiled for so many books in the past and I'm like burned from it um but book talk where I'm mostly scrolling is very respectful unlike the time that I was ruined for the ending of Skin of Scars because someone made the major spoiler of the end ending their twitter display name so it wasn't even like once I saw it I saw it like there was no chance for me not to see it to this day, I am so angry about it, and yes, I do hold a grudge. <clears throat> my god, this scene just made me squeal! Oh my god, oh my god, we're finally getting some cute moments. I literally have so many annotations. 
he is my baby and I love him, but he's literally like stretched out in a way that I am squished in between him and the couch. Like there is no room for me to wiggle my legs. I'm stuck and he's like, you just have to deal with it because I am snuggling you and he's just a baby. The one character that kind of just does like unhinged and out of pocket things and you hate them, it's not Jax. What the fuck? What the hell just happened? This guy's kind of evil. Apollo? Apollo's kind of evil. I'm not liking him. Bad vibes. Bad vibes. Alright, update. I'm on page 167. I have my doggy and my ambience room and it's setting the tone for the magnificent north. Even though it's spring there in this book, it's still a snow-covered paradise in my mind. Um, the angst is angsting. Oh my god. Like, oh, I'm just, I'm in pain because these characters are in pain and oh my god, there is so much angst and I'm just like, what is gonna happen? And like, uh, I've heard, like, I'm curious to see like how this is gonna end. So what she did with the ballad for Never After, she never told anyone that there was a third book and then just left it hanging as it was. I wonder if, like, if this is actually the finale of the series. I think it is. I heard that, like, there might be another spinoff, that she left room open with other characters for another spinoff. But, like, if Evangeline and Jax do not get a happy ending, I will be very upset. Um, also, like, if this ends on a huge cliffhanger, like, there has to be another book. I'm so curious. So curious to see how this is going to go. Okay, it's like almost 1 a.m. and I'm just at the halfway point. So yeah, I'm just like pain and suffering and like, I just need them. Uh, I just love them. Um, I love the whimsy of this tale, the setting, the like kind of like interesting magic rules. Like it's also fun. Also look at this curl. It's so curly. Love that for my hair. Okay. Um, so my plan is tomorrow I am doing a sprint with Tori. I do want to finish this during the weekend so that I just like have time to sit down and binge it. So I will be reading during the reading sprints and just having a grand old time. Um, and hopefully like I, you know, lock it down and like focus during the sprints with everyone. And I am excited and I'm just loving this so much and I need to unravel the mysteries of what is going on. I'm just so like enraptured. Hello, good morning. It's the next day and <clears throat> I'm currently on reading sprints with Tori. This is my setup. I turned my camera off to like vlog. We're in the first sprint right now but I am reading this and oh my god. <gasps> the angst is kill. It's killing me. It's killing me. Oh my god. Like I'm squealing like I can't, I'm genuinely, I'm so unokay right now. Like I just love them and I, oh my God, I'm, I'm in pain. Like the amount of angst is just crazy. Um, it's interesting because I'm like filming a spoiler and non-spoiler at the same time. So hopefully this vlog is like cohesive. But anyways, I am just, the angst is like everything I wanted and more. We're finally getting some character moments together and like I'm just screaming, crying, throwing up at every second at every second so we have about eight minutes left of the first sprint so i'm just gonna continue reading
I'm on page 221 and it says ye old brick inn at the end of the forest for wayward travelers and adventures. Beneath the sign was another swing sign that contained the word vacancy and then hooked beneath that was an even smaller sign that read one a bed. Miss Stephanie Garber. You know what you were doing to us. Oh, I love it. And I actually did see that in the map in the beginning. Let's see. Like, one bed, yes, 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 my favorite trope, oh my god, ah, we're finally getting more Eva Jackson, like, <laughs> hello, another check-in, I just finished sprints with Tori, it was so much fun, I've done sprints with Tori a few times, and I keep saying I'm gonna do more sprints, like, on my channel, um, but I never get to it, well, I am on page 293 and there's 385 pages left so I have less than 100 pages and I am, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just like in the home stretch and I'm so nervous. I am now on page 323 and so we are getting down to the last 60 pages or so and I am so nervous. I just need this book to like have a happy ending and I don't know what's going to happen and I am scared. I am scared. I'm so scared. Like what's going to happen to my board? babies I don't know uh, okay I'm gonna continue reading now hello friends I'm now on page 340 we're getting so close to the end only 40 pages left I'm again so nervous but we finally just got like a big reveal and like finally some answers to questions that we have had since literally legendary like that means that Stephanie Garber has been planning this for so so long because legendary was only her second book and this is her sixth book I just love when authors do that. I just love it. Oh my god. Um, so, I'm so scared. I only have this little much left. I'm so scared. Okay, I'll do another check-in when I get another big heartbreaking piece of information, I guess. What I just read was everything to me. It was everything. But there's still 30 pages left. I'm on page 350 and I am nervous <laughs> for what is to come because these last 30 pages are definitely gonna they're they're gonna set the stage for whatever is gonna happen next and like there's still some things that need to be resolved so i'm nervous okay pals i finished i finished oh my gosh and i think it ended perfectly i think it ended perfectly the last little bit was a little bit frustrating and i know it's like supposedly left up to the imagination so i need to think about some theories for that um however i'm very satisfied with this book like i was truly scared at some points but i really just think that it ended perfectly and um i had so much fun filming this vlog definitely the spoiler section is going to start now if you are stopping here maybe come back after you have read the book so you can hear more of my like in-depth thoughts but overall i this series just makes me so warm and fuzzy inside and that was the feeling I've had the whole time reading this and I just feel like truly like this series is one of the series and I'm just like wow like I love being a reader I just love this magic and whimsy that you can just find yourself in in a book and it just made me so happy it just it was perfect thanks for watching have some fun reading the books and I'll catch you guys in the next one okay Spoiler section. Okay, so I'm on page 94, and this is chapter 10, and Evangeline was just pushed down the well, which, like, who do we think is pushing her down the well? Also, I looked on this website, um, it's like book recaps or something like that, and it had so many details about what happened in the previous two books, and that really, like, caught me up on all of the little things that I needed to be paying attention to. So, yeah. Evangeline is being pushed down this well like Apollo stole her memories and is trying to have her like not get her memories back and he's like I don't necessarily like him as a character I don't feel like Jax more because at least Jax is like honest about who he is Apollo seems like he's kind of pretending to be good and then he sucks um I like that we have the Christoph Killinger or whatever and like his newspaper article titles like hint at things because now it seems like this guild of heroes is going to come into play Okay, so she got pushed down the well, and all of a sudden, Jax appears, even though we haven't seen him yet, and the fact that, like, Evangeline was gonna tell him that she loves him in both 
timelines because you know you re rewound time a little bit and she still hasn't gone to and she keeps like referring to she knows she is something important to tell someone Ugh. oh my god okay i also really want to know why he eats these apples okay like i just need that question answered i literally like on the page where he's rescuing her from the well, well like look i have so many highlights and then she's like flashing back to like instances of prose in the like previous book. And like I, this, like I just don't know how Stephanie Garber does it in so few words, just creates this like this most whimsical land. It's just so, such a talent. Um, but also, okay, so we have this here and it says, his arms encircled her waist, keeping her close to his chest. She could feel his chest pounding, pounding, pounding. So his heart is beating. And we know that his heart started beating because when Donatella kissed him and that was like, one person that was immune to his kiss but i don't know i think it his heart might be beating for evangeline and i think that there's a way that this can like weave together with you know what happened in the events of the care about trilogy and then it also says his heart was still pounding against her and then she flashes back to another part where he's like carrying her and then oh my god he rescued her he was there watching the whole time we love a good stalker moment <sighs> I'm just like so curious. There's like so many like little details and things that go into this book. It's crazy. So we'll see how far I get tonight and I'll keep you guys updated on the spoiler side as well. As well. I just read chapter, let's see, 12 and it's when Jax is in her bedroom and he's like, hey, and she just goes with him. Cause of course in her subconscious, she knows these things that are going on. Uh, just like, the chapter before um where he's like it's not an obsession i just need to make sure she's safe and like never leave her alone and i guess like the deal for him like turning back time was that time then took evangeline's memories from him i want her to get them back um and then at the end when he says you can call me archer because we know he's the archer in the ballad of the archer and the fox and when he says you already know little fox <laughs> stop Okay, so then he's like, all right, well, you need to learn how to fight. And we love a good fight training scene. So he's, you know, just being like, hey, in the middle of the night, like, come with me to the garden. She's just going with him. And they're getting, like, into some interesting fighting positions here. <laughs> um, I have so many things. It's, like, all pink adaptations because, oh, my God, the tension. The tension. When she goes, are you insane? And he goes, undoubtedly. And then he moves the dagger down. <laughs> oh my God, everything. Oh my God, finally. I was like, where's Jax? Where's Jax? Where's Jax? And finally he's back. Finally he's back. And she's starting to like get like glimpses of memories and things. <sighs> oh my God, I'm stressed. I'm stressed, but I can't stop reading. Also, Alex went to get a late night McFlurry. So now I have a Diet Coke. I'm on page 167 and it's another Jax chapter and he literally just said, okay, blah, 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 see. blah, 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 that she was everything, that he turned back time to keep her alive and he would make the same choices again. <laughs> and he wants to kill Apollo for kissing her, which like, we just love him. Oh my God, my dog's snoring. <laughs> um, we just love, you know, a guy who wants to murder other people for kissing you. Oh my god, the angst is angsting. So I'm on page 172, and it says, One of the reasons Jax had allowed himself to be turned into a fate was so that Castor wouldn't be alone, because he was the one who told Castor's mother to turn bring Castor back to the dead, which then created the vampires. And the vampires are why the Valors casted the storybook curse in the first place. And then the curse, like, twisted, because... It was supposed to be just have vampires became everything. Okay, so I want to know more information about like Jax actually turning into a fate. And I just like feel like the amount of book that I've left is like not enough to learn all this information. Like there's still a lot about like the fates that's still like, like Stephanie Garber is so good at just giving just enough, just enough to keep you on the hook. It's like you get answers, but yeah, you have 10 more questions. I'm curious. Hello. So coming in with a spoiler section, I'm on page 210 and we just got um, to the hunt and then Evangeline gets lost in the forest and she goes to the um, her childhood like shop and then Jax 
come to rescue her from Castor and Castor is saying like Jax is about to make a big mistake so like what is he about to do for Evangeline and then um he's like don't I don't want you near her ever and stabs him Ugh. and then oh my god okay I have so many things underlined because Jax is just like in pain he is just like an angsty boy and he like can't stay away from Evangeline and finally he is admitting his feelings for her after all this time we just get like an angsty pining yearning Jax and he's like I just probably deserve this and then he goes I'm a monster but whether you remember or not I'm your monster Evangeline <laughs> I'm gonna cry he wanted her to look at him just once and know, know him the way that she had before stop and then he goes, Jax had so badly wanted to tell her that he couldn't even remember what Donatella looked like, that Evangeline's face was the only thing he saw when he closed his eyes, and that he would go with her anywhere if he could. Shut up. Shut up right now. Shut up right now. It was better to hurt her, better to break her heart, to do whatever he needed to do to keep her alive and keep her away from him. Stop. And then he would have set the world on fire and let it all burn just to keep holding her like this. I am in pain. I am in pain. I'm in pain. Finally, I hope that they're like together for the rest of the book and like we just get more Eva Jax moments but like I oh my god the amount of just like angst is just killing me it's killing me okay guys so I'm on page 292 and <clears throat> let's see when I last checked in Jax like brought Evangeline to that like inn and then tried to put her to sleep and then she found the note on him and also they were just like holding each other oh. and then she remembered so she finally remembers and then she's like oh my god I hate Apollo and I'm like girly same we all hate him and then when she slaps him and then pretends like oh you just scared me <sighs> iconic moment she's like definitely standing up for herself more <clears throat> and then also like Aurora seems a little sus like she's like handing notes to Apollo so I think she has like her own motivations but I do wonder if that's gonna be who like the spinoff series would follow just because she is purple hair and I feel like Stephanie Garber makes her main characters have interesting hair um and it would kind of like if she's like scorned at the end of this book then like maybe that would make sense for her to have the next book okay so then where did I end off um this was so scary so like Evangeline like escaped and found Jax but then he's like acting so weird and he's like I'm just gonna kiss you and kill you blah 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 and then chaos like takes her and saves her and I'm just like <gasps> what's going on what's gonna happen so we'll see 90 pages left I'm gonna do a little bit of reading a little bit of organizing and uh, just continue to be scared <laughs> okay besties so I am on page 322 and we found out that Aurora was actually the one that put the curse on Jax both the archer's curse and his like um kiss curse because it was like if I can't have him then no one can girly she is not she's not that good I can say I don't think I quite like her I'm also wondering if the next book would be chaos and Lala because I do feel like there is some tension there and like Lala mentioned that she like found her dragon shifter that was like locked up in the Valerie and she was like eh about him so that could also be another future prediction <sighs> guys I'm so stressed I'm so stressed I just need them to be together and be happy and I'm like really scared for this ending Okay, wow, spoiler update. Um, Aurora really sucks, and we now know why Donatella why Donatella was able to survive Jack's kiss. It says, when I realized Jax was never going to kill the fox girl, I put another spell on him. But the story curse twisted the truth of it. It's not Jax's true love who will be immune to his kiss and make his heart beat again. Only a girl who will never love Jax can survive the kiss. So that is why Donatella survived the kiss, because she would never love Jax. Are we kidding right now? Are we kidding? Oh my god. Stop. It's all making sense now. Like, because Donatella and Jax kissed in Legendary, I think, like, Miss Stephanie Garber has been planting the seeds for this plot twist for, like, a uh, finale of, like, three books. So sh then Legendary came out in, like, what, 2019? <laughs> it's been a while, and this has been all planned out. Oh stop just like plunge a knife straight through my heart i'm unwell i'm unwell <laughs> oh, i'm gonna cry stop i just 
I'm on page 350. So Evangeline just reached him at the tree before he burned his heart and she kissed him and she survived and it was so beautiful. I am like, I am tearing up. I'm tearing up. I love them so much. Thank God. Thank God. And then he thinks that she dies and she just like can't breathe because the kiss is so good. I can't, I can't breathe. Okay, what I'm also nervous about though, however, is that there is about um, still 30 pages left. So like, what is going to happen? Hello, pals. So now in the parallel world, this is my spoilery thoughts on the ending. How dare she not give us an answer? for why he eats apples but he says he doesn't need them anymore so like is he just trying to like not kiss people when he's eating the apples i know it's like supposed to be one of those like oh it's open to your own interpretation no just tell me just tell me i do think that this world is closed down enough if she doesn't return to this world right away that i don't know like i don't know who exactly she would follow next maybe it would be one of the valors maybe it'd be like lala and caster like i think that there is potential for more stories but i'm curious to see if she's going to announce that she is returning to this world or if she is doing a new project thankfully it was a happy ever after for evangeline and Jax, because if it wasn't if it wasn't i i like honestly was so afraid that she wasn't going to give us a happy ever after also the fact that apollo just like got eaten by the tree because he loved himself more than he loved evangeline like ugh, we love that I just love that. I love that ending. I don't know. I feel like this book just like really was perfect. It was everything that I was expecting. It like I guess you're always afraid for a highly anticipated book of it not living up to what you think it would be but I think it was on par with the other books and I think it was a perfect ending and just like their love like the fact that she just like believed in their love so much that she broke his curse. Oh, I'm wondering if this, like, in the picture is, like, her cuff or if it's part of her dress. She just believed in him enough to break the curse and they're just happy together. And I have my Barnes & Noble edition. Hold on. And this one has the, like, uh, one alternate ending. So I think there's three. But this one was, they went back to the hollow and they, like, ran it as an inn and... Like, she's trying to paint the sign, and then Jack paints it over as, like, those searching for unhappily ever after. I think that's so cute. But honestly, I'm just, like, filled with butterflies, and I'm so happy it was a good ending. I felt like it appropriately, like, had good stakes. Like, the whole thing with the Tree of Souls, like, it just had appropriate amount of whimsy. And yes, like, I still... I still do feel like there is more to the Valors, and that there is going to be more to that story. But I don't... I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the conclusion. And I honestly, guys, let me know if you want me to do more of these style vlogs. I have found this so fun and there's a lot of books coming out that I can do this for. I was thinking of doing this for Iron Flame, Fall of Wrath and Ruin. You know, I, obviously not for every book that I read, that would be exhausting. But for like the really big titles, I think it could be really fun. And I am just having a great time. And uh, like, I don't even want to start another book today because I just want to think about Evangelina Jax all day. <laughs> like, I'm so sad it's over, but it was such a satisfying conclusion. And I am, like, I'm just smiling, thinking about them, and I love them. So that is all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, just, yes, everything. Everything about this. Um... Leave a little pink flower emoji if you have watched this far for Evangeline's hair and or or ooh, or an apple for Jax even though we don't know why he eats apples that's so frustrating I really wanted to know why um but yeah uh just this was so much fun all right bye guys have some fun reads and likes and I'll catch you guys in the next one I already filmed my outro clip but I just found the bonus epilogues in the Owlcrate version and the Waterstones version and I definitely definitely think the next book is about Aurora based on the Owlcrate epilogue um, and whoever she awakened from the tree so I'm highly anticipating that and I also think we're gonna get a caster and la la story in there as well so that's my postscript but yeah um, love the series cannot wait to see what Stephanie is announcing next 
and hopefully she's working on something and we get new soon. Okay, bye! Thank you.